Okay, it's the end of the session. I'm here, this is Stella, and this is Stella's Roadmap to Success. Um, only rewarding her with the treat so you have a little bit of Stella in the shot. Um, all right, so basically, uh, Stella is a great little dog. Not a little dog, she's a, she is a boxer, and she's in her prime, and probably is not getting as much exercise. So the first thing we started talking about was some creative forms of exercise. A lot of us, um, we think of exercise like for humans, we exercise once a day, and that's good for us for the day. Um, but dogs actually sleep a lot, and so they need uh, exercise every couple of hours. And especially a dog like Stella, who does not have a yard. Now, the problem uh, compounding things with Stella is uh, she pulls and lunges on her leash, and she's actually pulled her guardian down a couple of times and injured her guardian. So Stella's gonna be taking our loose leash walking class, which will help with that, but we still need to exercise her. And a lot of people don't think of exercise um, for dogs the way that we probably should. Exercise will amplify, or lack of exercise will amplify the problems that you have. A well-exercised dog is usually perceived to be a well-behaved dog. Just like kids, they get a lot of exercise, they seem to be well-behaved. No, we just set them up for success. So I'd like you to, and with something we talked about as a theme throughout, is we wanted to, uh, we have uh, one of the guardians coming here, uh, so I think uh, she's gonna go crazy here in a second. Uh, but basically, one of the things that we think of is that uh, uh, we don't think of, uh, we think of the dog as being naughty when the dog barks or jumps up or whatever it is, or demonstrates that it's got too much energy, right? Um, there we go. And so basically, um, instead of that, when we should think of it more like a baby. If you have a baby that's crying because it's tired, you don't say it's a naughty baby, you say that the baby's tired. And most parents don't become reactive, they are proactive. So they don't wait for the child to start getting cranky and then whining and then get a nap. They say, hey, it's 12.30, he needs a nap. And the dog's like, but I don't need it. The kid's like, I don't need a nap. Well, the parents are gonna make sure that you get a nap regardless. And so the idea is we wanna get her exercise ahead of time to set her up for success. So um, we have a school that's nearby. So there's a lot of kids that come by. Before we do the counter connection exercise that's above, we should probably exercise her first. Before the, uh, maybe if the kids come at three o'clock every day is when school gets out. Every, every day at, at 2.40, we give her five minutes on the doggy Stairmaster. And remember, exercise needs to be on an empty stomach and the dog needs a minimum of 10 minutes rest after it ends before the next thing happens. Otherwise, they'll be worse behaved. So that we went over the doggy Stairmaster, which is throwing the treats up and down the stairs. We went over scent games. We went over um, uh, feeding out of a snuffle mat. We also went over playing fetch. Now when you're playing fetch, I want you to say the word fetch three times. As I throw the object, I say fetch. When the dog picks the object up with their mouth, I say fetch, and I hold the treat out. And when the dog comes over and we put the treat in their mouth, we say fetch a third time. So this associates all three elements. And eventually say fetch, the dog means, oh, go get, you're gonna throw the thing, I go get it and bring it back to you and I get a reward. So I would count each fetch as an actual, as one repetition. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we have going on here. The Guardian, hey Jay, how you doing? Um, so uh, she was very excited when he first came home and she's all excited and jumping up. Now anything a dog is doing when you pet it is what you're specifically rewarding. So if a dog comes in, comes if you come home and your dog's all excited and you pet your dog, your dog's thinking, if, you, if I wanna get petted from the humans, I get really excited and jump up and spaz out on them and that's the way to ask for attention because I get attention when I'm doing that action. So when your dog is excited, most of us confuse excitement for happiness when it comes to dogs, but excited is an unbalanced state of mind. So when she's excited, just ignore her, walk around, don't tell her no, don't punish her, don't chastise her, just don't give her any attention. Once she calms down, you start reaching for her, she'll start wiggling, pull your arm back and go back to doing what you're doing. You might have to reach for her this way 10, 20, 30 times. Eventually it's like, man, you've been home for 15 minutes, I'm over it. And then she's nice and calm and when you're petting her, what are you petting? You're petting a calm and balanced state of mind. So um, uh, when she's excited or you have guests come over, don't have them pet her. Now again, for guests, what we could do, we could exercise her ahead of time. So you might find before guest comes over, she needs 20 up downs on the stairs, or 15 fetches, or whatever it is, or a 25 minute walk. So once you start identifying it this way, you start thinking about, um, I need this much exercise to set the dog up for success before the kids come home from school, before practicing the counter conditioning exercise and so on. So for the doggy Stairmaster, and again, empty stomach, show her that you have a treat at the top of the stairs. And I probably have the other guardian because there's a split level. So you can throw the treat to the first landing, the dog licks it up, don't say anything, and have the other person down at the bottom of the stairs and, they, and calls her. And when she comes to them, they give her a treat and they call it like Cabo or you know, a warm weather climate, Cuba or BVI or whatever you want to say. And the treat goes in the mouth first, she hears the command word second. So then uh, the person at the top of the stairs says, Stella, she runs to the top of the stairs, we give her another treat, call this one Canada or Denver, some word that means go up the stairs. And so the first time we do it, we count each down, going all the way to the bottom and going up, that's one repetition. And with an empty stomach, we do that until she's like, you're crazy, I've done that 48 times, I'm not doing that anymore. 
that's from a maximum amount of fetches for the stairs. Well, we exercise her 50 to 75% of that or ebb and flow and t try it out. So before a walk, maybe we try giving her 10 up downs on the stairs, give her 10 minutes to recover, then go take her for a walk and see how well she behaved. If it wasn't, and give her a letter grade. If it was a C minus, okay, the next day maybe we're gonna fetch her 20 times. After 20 times that we take her for a walk, oh wow, her behavior was much better. Um, she got a B minus, but still room for improvement. So maybe next time we fetch her 30 times or up down the stairs or whatever it is. So the idea is to, to marry or pair the right amount of exercise with whatever the activity is so that we can set her up for success. Um, all right, so that's exercise. We also talked about, uh, and I have videos for that stuff, so let me know if you have any questions on it. We also talked about rules. Most people don't have any rules for the dog because we perceive rules as a negative, but the, the way that dogs learn, a lack of rules confuses them in thinking that we are peers. And if we are peers at the same level, then listening to each other is optional, which is not the dynamic most people want with their dog. So in the dog world, leaders are the ones who enforce the rules. So I suggested some rules, and now, um, before I get to the rules, a couple of dog psychology things. Remember, anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're specifically rewarding behavioral-wise, not for emotional states. And so if you're a petted barking dog, you're gonna make it more barking. Sitting dog, more sitting. Coming dog to you, laying down, whatever it is. Um, now, anything that a dog does in your presence you don't specifically disagree with is looked at as having your seal of approval. So in the dog world, in a very real way, not saying no is equal to saying yes, and this is important for dogs, because dogs are like probing to learn where boundaries are. If they come here and you correct, when you get to the, border, the boundary, they stop, they turn around, they come and try a little bit different, and you correct. And I'm doing the edge of my shirt as a correction. So this is the line. As soon as I cross, as I am about to cross it, the humans correct me. But I'm over here and I stop, they don't correct me. I'm here and they stop, they don't correct me here. So only when I get to this line, the edge of my sleeve, that's when the, dog, when the correction happens. So you're gonna probe multiple times, and if you're consistent like 15 or 10 times or whatever the number of times in a row, the dog's like, every time I try to cross that line, they disagree with me, so they must not want me to cross that line. We look at it as like, the dog's being defiant, he keeps on trying to cross the line. The dog's really just learning. And the reason dogs do this is because eventually we teach them to stay across the line and then they finally figure that out and then they don't go across the line for a while and we're like, hey, you've been such a good job of not crossing the line, coming across the line is a reward. And the dog's like, now I don't understand, I'm confused. And that leads to a lot of frustration both in the human and the dog. So rules should be consistently enforced. You should never enforce, uh, break a rule to reward a dog. It just makes them want to do a uh, taste for it more and more. So the first rule I suggest, uh, and then uh, let me see, uh, any attention is validating is also important. So if your dog jumps up on someone and you say, stop that, well, that's rewarding the dog with your attention and that validates the behavior. So if the dog jumps up on someone, what I'd like you all to do is just kind of pull your arms back and freeze, hold still. We do this all the time. If somebody comes up to you and they're talking to you and you don't like what they're talking about, you don't say, tell me more. You say, yes, no. You like engage with them less, we disengage. So the same thing for dogs. When, the do when you jump up on me, I freeze and become boring. When the dog gets down, tell it to sit or to lie down and then pet it for sitting and lying down. If it sits or lies down, if it doesn't, it doesn't get any attention. So I'm not gonna reward or chastise you because that's validating. Instead, I'm just gonna become boring. All right, um, other rules. Um, you have, we're gonna, I'd like the guardians to use a lot of premax. Premax means, uh, is a principle. It uh, means that a less desirable behavior will earn you a more desirable behavior. Your boss comes in and says, hey, as soon as you finish this report, you can leave for the day. Well, that gives you motivation to bust your butt and get that report done early so you can get out of there. Less desirable behavior, do your work, and to be a more, more desirable behavior, getting to leave the office early. So uh, I'd like you to kind of start thinking about that and, uh, and apply that for your door, uh, attaching the tether on the other side of the door. Um, before you uh, open the door, tell her to sit. If she doesn't sit, walk away, sit down, wait one minute. After one minute, come back and tell her to sit one time. If she doesn't sit, walk away this time. If she doesn't sit within two seconds, walk away, sit down, this time for two minutes. Come back and tell her to sit, one, two, doesn't sit, walk away and sit down, this time for four minutes, then for eight minutes. Keep double the length of time. As soon as she sits, open that door. But the first uh, case, because uh, she gets really excited, every time you come to this door in the basement, you tell her to sit and then you try to attach the leash and as soon as you do that, you open the door and she gets to run out in the front yard and yell and bark and all that fun stuff. She was happy about that. That's a classically conditioned response. So what I would do is I would just teach her that if you go to the door and sit down quietly, I'll attach the, cop, the leash and then I'll give you a treat and I'll sign a command word like buckle up or whatever you want to say. And then I would detach it and then go back upstairs. So we don't validate by the excitement of going out the door. We just go, we tell her to sit, she sits, we give her the treat and then she gets, then we go back upstairs. So after a while, you know, maybe you detach her, take a step away from the door and then walk back to her, tell her to sit, she sits, you attach the leash and then you give her the treat afterwards and say buckle up. So you do that like 10 times in a row, then you go back upstairs and watch the TV. Next time you come down, you tell her to 
uh, sit, she sits, you attach the leash, uh, give her the treat and say buckle up. After a while, you can come down there and say buckle up, she'll sit down. You pick up the leash, you attach it, then you give her the treat and say buckle up. So now you're able to direct her to do what you want her to do, like I told her to lay down on the floor right there. Um, so the idea is we want to get the dog conditioned to do the things that we want by creating a scenario where we help them practice that activity. And after they practice it over and over enough times in a row, uh, then they're kind of conditioned to, to do it. But we do it in the easiest version. If you tell her to sit and then open the door, that's not an easy version because she gets rewarded by running outside. Okay, um, also other rules uh, have to uh, uh, not be allowed in the kitchen where we're preparing food, not be allowed around the dining room table where we're eating food. Uh, so use the exercise I showed you inside. If you forget how to do that, you can go to my website and search for invisible or kitchen, and there's videos that show how to do both of those things. We also talked about uh, petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose. If the dog comes up and nudges you, it's telling you what to do. If you pet it, it can confuse the dog and think it's in charge of you. And if it's in charge of you, it does not have to listen to you. So from now on, when the dog comes up and nudges you, or in this case, a boxer paws at you, I'd like you to give the dog a counter order, tell it to sit. If it sits within that two second window of the first and only time you set, pet it, or you say it, you pet under the chin, say the word sit, and pet her as long as little as you want. If you say sit and the dog doesn't sit, you play hard to get. That works great for training dogs, just like it does for dating. So pull out your phone and check out some emails, watch TV, read a magazine, show the dog, I have other things to do. I'm not gonna yell at you, I'm not gonna get mad. You just don't get what you want. After a while, the dog will recognize, I can't tell the humans what to do anymore. I have to ask for things that, rather than tell. Leaders tell, followers ask. Um, and not only do I have to ask, I have to actually pay for the privilege of their attention. And I pay for it through a currency of obedience. And every time that, the only way you'll, you'll pet me is if I'm sitting. So the dog will start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for that attention. When it does, make sure you give it that treat or that reward and say the word sit. Remember to pet under the chin whenever possible, avoid petting on top of the head, and say just the word sit, not good sit, not go oh, what a good dog, just sit. That can make a much stronger connection if you say just the command word in concert within the act, with the action within two seconds. So, um, so if, if she tells you what to do, nothing happens. If you tell her what to do and she does it, she gets a reward. After a while, like I said, she'll prepay for the attention. Um, and make sure you do recognize a reward when she does that. After a while, um, or uh, and then I also like to use a watchword for this. I use uh, paycheck. Paycheck means I suspect you forget you forgot to pet with a purpose. So if someone comes to the room and sees I'm petting Stella and she's standing. They say paycheck. I stop petting her even if I did it right. I tell Stella to sit. If she sits, I pet her on the chin and say sit. And I tell the person actually I asked her to sit. And when you open the door, she stood up because she was excited. But I still petted her. But thanks for reminding me. I do forget to pet without a purpose. So it's not a gotcha. It's a gentle reminder to help the human stay on, on point. We don't realize how often we pet the dogs without a purpose. Um, if you get in the habit of that, doing that every time you pet your dog, it increases the dog's respect for you as a leader. It boosts the dog's confidence, which will help with the barking and a lot of other problems. It helps the dog practice listening to, practice basic obedience. It also makes your pets more valuable. Because I don't, if you, I don't do what you want, I don't get the reward. And the human is just fine not giving me the reward. I'm the one missing out as the dog. The human is complete. After a while, the dog is motivated. It, makes, it wants that pet, and it has to work to earn that pet. All right, um, we also uh, talked about passive training, which is really a form of operant conditioning. Passive training is waiting for the dog to organically offer you the behavior that you want um, without asking for it. So um, right now there's a dog passing behind the camera, so she's over there. And so she's kind of going to check it out. That's not related. But if she comes to me and I don't ask her and I pet her when she comes to me, I'm rewarding a behavior that I like coming to me. So passive training or celebrating is just waiting for the dog to offer you the behavior that you want and then recognize rewarding them within that two second window. So if you're watching TV and Stella walks up to you, pet her and say, come. If she sits next to you, pet her on chin and say, sit. When she lays down, pet her and say, crash. Um, so what you're doing is saying, these are the things that you can do to get my attention. After a while, Stella will come and, like I said, be more inclined to want to sit because that seems to be what gets your attention. Most of us train our dogs to misbehave because it comes to us, we ignore it. It sits, we ignore it. It lays at our feet, we ignore it. It drops the ball, we ignore it. But as soon as it starts barking, we correct it. Jumps up on our guests, we correct it. Remember, good attention, bad attention, very similar. So by rewarding the dog for the actions that you want, the dog will offer those behaviors more often in order to get your attention. Now you're training your dog to do the things you want versus things you don't want. We also talked about uh, my escalating consequences, how I disagree with unwanted behaviors. I'm not gonna go over those with you on, uh, on the camera, but if you have questions about those, be, be sure to message me. Um, and again, I want you to have that mindset of when she's doing something naughty or wrong, ask yourself how long she's been she's been exercised. I think for her, increasing her exercise is gonna help and not stop a lot of these problems, greatly diminish many of them. So remember, exercise is best done every two to four hours. So play around with the number of the, the delays between exercise, as well as the quantity, the number of repetitions, until you find that Goldilocks zone. 
So like I said, it might be before a guest come over, maybe she needs this many of, uh, up downs of the stairs. Before a walk, she needs this many fetches. Before uh, the kids are walking home from school, she needs this many, whatever it is. Um, now we also talked about feed it, make sure you eat before you feed her. Right now the Guardian's free feeder, three cups of food late in the day. So what I would recommend you go is structure feeding. So you go in the kitchen, you eat something in five or more bites, then put food in her bowl and put the bowl down and, she, and cover it, don't let her have it. And if she, as soon as she walks away, moves backs away, pick up your hand, she goes for it, put your hand back on it, wait, wait for her to disengage, then you pull your hand up, she goes for it, you close. So you eventually get to the point where she goes for it, you pick it up, you stop, and eventually you pick your hand up and she stays here. Then you give her permission to eat. When she takes that first bite of food, say meatball, lasagna, sushi, whatever your word is, so you create a command word to eat. If she eats a little bit and walks away, as soon as she walks away, pick up the bowl, dump it empty, put the empty bowl back on the floor, don't feed her again until the next meal. And hunger becomes your ally. And this way the human's eating first so, and the human has dominion over the food and she has to wait and restrain herself. Just because there's food in the bowl doesn't mean I can eat it. The human's hand comes over it if I try to go for it. So I have to wait and as soon as I stop trying to go get it, this is a version of the leave it exercise. As soon as I stop trying to get it, then the human lets me have it. So I'm being rewarded for not challenging. As soon as I challenge, the human stops and blocks me. There's no punishment, but they stop me from doing it. So not fighting the human is rewarded challenging the human loses. There's no punishment, but I don't get the validation. So after a while, I'm just gonna sit here and wait. And after she waits, then you can wait one second before you give her permission to eat. Next time you give her two seconds before she, uh, wait her two seconds before you give her permission to eat. Then three seconds, four seconds. My puppy Quest, he's not a puppy anymore, sometimes I'll forget to feed him. Because the other two dogs go outside the dog door and I don't get them to come in the office, so I, don't, I forget because I'm in the other room. I yell my dog's words out and they eat. I'll go in the kitchen two hours later and get a drink of water and he's still sitting 10 feet away from his bowl waiting for eat, permission to eat. That's a wonderful way to practice some self-restraint, self-control. Remember, the more that you incorporate these exercises in your day-to-day -day routine by petting with a purpose, passive training, all that fun stuff, enforcing rules, now you're teaching your dog and you're creating a healthy leader follow dynamic through your actions, which is much more profound than stopping and spending 10 minutes training the dog here and then not being a great example. It's kind of that old adage. Do as I say, not as I do. Dogs are going to do whatever they see you do. So the more that you get in the habit of doing these little twists to the things you're doing by making her sit before you pet her, and if she doesn't sit, then she doesn't get that reward, that, that motivation creates a much better a leader follower dynamic where the dog wants to do what you want. Come. That's a perfect example of, of passive training or celebrating right there. I didn't ask her to come. She just came up. When she did, she got rewarded. All right, Miss Stella, let's sign off. Sit sit. So remember when you give a treat, you can't see her because she's right off camera, but I told her what to do. When she did it, then I petted her or I would give her the treat and I'd say the command word immediately after to make that connection. Make a much stronger connection if you say the command word. So I really say it twice. I'll tell you one more time. Stella, stay over here where you see on camera. Sit. Sit. Treat goes in the mouth first. I still don't think you can see her there. Um, I wasn't looking. But treat goes in the mouth and then they get the reward and then they hear the command word. Well, Stella, this is my buddy Stella, and those are Stella kisses. I'm over here. Sit. sit. This is Stella. Uh, so this is Stella, and this is Stella's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.